now running. Let's see if they can keep it up. It's more NBA coming your way. And now the second quarter just about to begin. Here's Price. So with Duncan sitting on the bench, here's how the floor looks for Greg Popovich. They've got McDice. Blair is out there with Ginobili. Then it's Tony Parker. Parker against Price. Oh, cool. And a foul call. Almost got it to go in, but he'll go to the line for two. First Hard time for Memo last spring. He ruptured his left Achilles tendon in the first game of the playoffs last year. Boy, what a big loss that was for the Jazz, Kevin, who got swept in the second round. They really missed his size and his perimeter shooting. And that one misses. And he's good on the second. You know, Clark back to Okura, a really gifted shooter for a big man. And a guy who is as big as he is that can stretch the defense, he would have been really valuable against a team like the Lakers. It would have forced one of those big guys to come out of the paint area. True. Let's check out what Doris Burke has for us. Kevin, last season, Dewan Blair out of Pittsburgh fell into the second round based on concerns about his lack of height, lack of a developed postgame, and the lack of ACLs in either knee. But just as in college, Blair found a way to produce. He said, I know I have to earn my respect in the NBA. Nobody is just going to give it to me. Guys, if he continues to play the way he has, respect won't be an issue for this young guy. He's done a great job. Thanks, Doris. And so here is San Antonio following the three-pointer by Utah. Here's McDice. Nails the turnaround jumper. Way to square up off the quick turnaround. That's textbook, and it's pretty. And it's Utah's ball. Eight-point game. Back to Kirilenko. Here's Miles. No good. Now San Antonio the other way. Here's Ginobili. He has five. And here's McDice. Five to shoot. He puts up a three. Miles yanks down the rock. And Utah has possession. Only given up two points this quarter. Price with the ball. Al Bell. Two on the clock. Okur, that's good. And San Antonio calls the first timeout of the game. Millsaps checked in for the Jazz. Williams comes in for Ronnie Price. The Spurs making a switch here. Here's Parker. 
2.46 left in the second. You know, as always, the Jazz are enjoying one of the best home courts in all of the NBA, Kevin. I mean, it's just a hard place to get a win on a road swing because the fans are there on top of you, and the team is well-coached, hard-nosed, and defends its home court. Jazz trail by six. Here's Millsap. And he makes the basket, so one free throw coming up as he'll try to make it a three-point play. Shooting for Utah. Paul Millsap. Shooting in one. He can't complete the three-point play. 32 wins for him last season here for the Jazz. From all accounts, Clark, it's the noise level that is just incredibly deafening for visitors. Well, those fans love their Utah Jazz. Um, I don't know if it's the acoustics of this place or the wild fans, but it gets hard to think out there on the floor, uh, much less to play winning basketball on the road. Kirilenko for three. No good from Bell. Two minutes left in the half to the wing. McNice. Pass to Parker. And McNice backs in. Three on the clock. And Tony McDice. Jump shot is good that time. And the Spurs lead by six. You've got to close out on that mid-range jump shot. Timeout is called first of the game for the Jams. Okay. Let's swing it over to Doris Burke. Well, Kevin, as you know, the Spurs got off to a slow start last season, and that's something we had seen from them before. But according to Coach Greg Popovich, this time it was a little bit different. He pointed to the adjustment of teaching new players a system, saying, we lost a bit more corporate knowledge than I had thought. It's taken more time than I expected to get everybody back on the same page. And guys, as the Spurs continue to refresh the deck, that's going to continue to be a challenge for them. Doris, thank you for that. You know, it's never easy when you have a bunch of older vets mixed in with a bunch of first and second year guys. That dynamic is a real challenge for a team. My game's beat is at 85. I'm a Hall of Famer with Lake of Pride. I pop outside, I take it inside. I cross your over with that old school triple drive. You love this flow. Al Jefferson's checked in for Memo Okur. The Spurs also changing it up. Honors checked in. Here's Williams. Not on the scoreboard yet. Takes a three. That's good. Darren Williams. A terrific passer, but a great scorer, too. Yeah, he really is, Kevin. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's at the basket, from mid range, or even out beyond the arc. He shoots a high percentage because he takes high quality shots and he can finish around the rim. Duncan with a screen on Williams. Off the pick. Parker with another miss. Oh, man. That shot looked like a sure thing, but he just couldn't get it to fall. Williams against Parker. Here is Bell. Jacks up the triple. Another miss by Williams. And even though Williams has as good a size for a point guard position as you're going to find, it's very tough to stay in front of. He's got unbelievably quick feet and tremendous balance, Kevin. He's not a blur in terms of straight ahead speed, but his quickness is as good as any guard in the league. Now here's Williams, following the miss by Tony Parker. Over Parker. Williams missing again. I'm sure he'd like to have a do-over here. He just hasn't been able to make a significant contribution in this one. Here's Jefferson. A foul called, and he earns a trip to the line. Sometimes teams have a tendency to be content and not press the action. I think we're seeing a little bit of that from them right now. They haven't been to the line as much as before, and I think that's the reason why. They've backed off a little bit.
The first free throw is good. So both teams changing it up here. And good on the second, so he makes them both. Here is Williams. Here's Miles. And that's off as he tries to beat the buzzer. And so we wrap up the first half. 